in Detroit, Michigan. They have done a tiny home village. And the good thing about the tiny, tiny home village is that it is, uh, it's kind of geared toward very low income people that don't have a lot of money and can't really get in the market anywhere. And the rent is a dollar per square foot. These homes are anywhere from 250 to $400 a month. Uh, they, uh, they got a lot of what they found in there is uh, the people that were homeless, people that were incarcerated are living there. Uh, they got some kids that are aged out of foster care and now they're on their own and obviously they can't afford high rent. So they got some of those that were in there and some seniors. So the way it works is that uh, once they've paid their rent, Every month for seven years, they are handed over the deed to the tiny house mortgage free. So you go in there, it's a very low rent. Obviously you have to do an application for it. Right now that one is closed, it's full. And apparently uh, John Bon Jovi, Ford and General Motors has at least bought one of these tiny homes in this village for people. And I think this, could be a, a way to go. And then in order to get in to one of these homes, you have to go through mandatory financial literacy classes that teaches you all about money, teaches you about rent, expenses, how to downsize your spending and everything so that you can afford a home. And this is mandatory that you have to do this. So I, I think this is great, Canada. Why don't we get on to something like this instead of building more towers to have more rental that's still expensive? How about we do little things like this, little villages to help? And it's, you know, you don't just put anybody in there because I can tell you now with the subsidized homes that we're doing, I know at least in Durham region that there are people in them that have been in them for years that are now well underway and they can go out and afford rent, but they're still there taking up the space of people waiting to get into one. So, you know, you have to have some good regulations in place that you know everybody. But this wouldn't be the same with these people here, with people here, once once they're here, same cheap, cheap uh, housing, they're not gonna leave after. No, well, they actually get to own the home because they paid their dues for seven years and they've been good. And obviously they went through these classes I'm sure along the way, they are constantly checking their financials. I mean, they have to have some kind of a it's tight a, hole on stuff. That's not bad, it's the seven year amortization? For, for what? Yeah, that's really good. However, the issue that I have with that Where is, uh, can, can I see something, yes, sweetheart? Yeah, that's okay. They have the homeless there, the incarcerated, the well, I was going to talk about yeah, it. And it just, it just doesn't sound like a very, it yeah. doesn't sound like Pleasantville. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, if you could last seven years there, then you've done well. And I would imagine at the end of seven years, you're moving on out. Yeah, because then they have, like, I can't remember what it was called, but like in Toronto, they had like a place where, they had the buildings, like it was, it was like no streets like that. Where, where, uh, they had like, they had the complex with houses, but there was like no streets in between. Yeah. And they had like a lot, a lot of crime there because again, you had, yeah, yeah you're Regent Park. It was Regent Park? Okay. Regent Park is, is yeah. the highest crime area downtown Toronto. They've finally broken it up, but it was a place that you wouldn't walk through that neighborhood late at night, period, unless you were one of the criminals. Then you felt it was safe. But outside of that, it was a bad, bad neighborhood. People were getting killed, stabbed, like, drugs was flowing like crazy. Like maybe if they did this, but with the same kind of thing with Ryan was saying before, where you can have the house, but you have to be working or you have to, like you have to be productive. You can't just be getting you the cheap. You have to contribute. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But I don't know. I thought it was interesting. I it mean, is. obviously you have to run it, run it like a business and have all these rules in place. Uh, yeah, my, my, my only thing is, is that um, uh, I know I'm a little negative when it comes to some of this stuff. And when like our government says, oh, we're going to create affordable housing. And I'm like, your affordable housing is called the ghetto. Yeah. You know, that's what it's called. I know because I've been in it, you know, and my family was uh, in it. Not and me. so, no, no. Just let you know. When Before we were, me. When, when we were we ones. <laughs> Um, you know, and so, uh, you know, they, they, 
that I, that's why I'm not great on that. I, I, I kind of like a little bit of what they're doing now where they'll take um, um, like a, a condo building and then they'll say, okay, let's, let's sprinkle it with other people. So you're mixing everybody together as opposed to putting all of the, you know, criminals and all that stuff into one spot where they all get to learn and feed off of each other. I think that's kind of dangerous personally. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed it and please let us know your thoughts in the comments, as well as any questions you may have. We're live most Saturdays at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, so make sure you tune in. Thank you again for watching and remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so you can stay up to date on all our future uploads.